Tika uh, was born in New Delhi um, 17 years ago. Um, <laughs> And uh, emigrated to Australia when she was three, grew up in, uh, in Sydney. Um, and um, a couple of significant things have happened uh, in the last year for Katika, particularly two residencies that we'll focus on uh, today. Uh, a residency in uh, New Delhi, which is where she comes from, the land of her, her, her father, particularly. Um, and then also the British School in Rome residency, the National Arts School residency uh, there. So there's two sides, there's Rome and there's New Delhi. Underpinning all of this is, is something more fundamental to your background, which is to do with the caste system in India. So um, Katika um, uh, belongs to the caste, which is you know, um, unsavoury sort of dumped the untouchables. It's the lowest possible caste um, in uh, Indian culture. And this, uh, the kind of complicated, um, system, the caste system, and all that revolves around it is really central to your work. Um, during the time at the National Art School, uh, Katika used a source text, uh, which are the rules of the untouchables, uh, in her work, and, and maybe we'll talk about some of those rules. So th these rules are still in place uh, in India, we'll talk about more about how, how current these, these rules are and, and the kind of battle that people of, of, of different castes have in India. But these rules basically state some fundamental things about people of your caste. So people of your caste are not meant to um, speak another language. They're not meant to travel. They're not meant to get an education. What, what are some of the other? Um, I think uh, the sort of idea is, is this kind of, you know, the shadow and, and pollution, um, I mean, the sort of idea, sorry, I'm just nervous. Um, Don't be nervous. And, and maybe, maybe face this. Yes. <laughs> about this show as a sort of progression from the work that, that, that Katika was doing at art school. Um, at art school, um, that text was very present in the works, the actual physical text, right? And um, in this show, I think the only only work that is present in is that, is that green work. So if you get a chance after, have a look at it, and you'll see very faintly um, the, um, the Hindi kind of script there, which is taken from uh, these rules. And uh, thank you, Rosa. And um, this transition, from uh, the use of text to sort of making the works without the text but still dealing with uh, the same issues is really central uh, to this exhibition. And also to the idea of corpus, the idea of the body, and the, and the very different kind of meanings uh, associated with that term, uh, corpus. But for you, um, a lot of these works are about the embodying of those ideas, moving beyond language. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit yeah. about that. Yeah. It was it was very much thinking about. I think um, especially today, so much language is politicized, and when we talk about anything political, it's always with the same language. And I think corpus is sort of under the skin of that language. It's the experience of it. It's what it feels like. I think um, especially when you kind of embody so much politics, it was under the surface and. It's interesting to talk now, but I think a lot of the work was made from that wordless experience of, of language, what that feels like, where, where it fits the body. Um, so that's, uh, you know, the way that it's kept on in the cells, the way that it's kept under the skin, and that was the idea behind the show. Um, so we talked briefly at the start about these, these two residencies, these very formative residencies, which were geared towards making this exhibition. So the one in New Delhi, the return to the, the sort of homecoming to New Delhi, um, and, and, then, and then Rome. And, and when you were talking to me earlier about it, Katika described it like almost like the left side and the right side of the brain. You have like a rational side and you have an emotional side. For Katika, the experience in New Delhi was the emotional, was the heart, was the familiar. Um, and the experience in Rome was the sort of um, the isolated, the cold, the, the, the calculated. And I guess, and you know, it's a difficult thing to talk about in the midst of, of these two residencies between these two brackets. Um, Tika's father, Utum Sadli, passed away, and this is you know, a, a very significant thing. And tonight we dedicate this talk uh, to the memory of your late father. 
Um, you talked about being in New Delhi, and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, how fundamental that was to you um, reconnecting with, with, with family. And you said an interesting thing about uh, your father. Um, Katika said that um, her father, although he lived in Sydney, always lived in New Delhi. He always lived in New Delhi in his mind. Even if he was here, he was always in New Delhi. His mind, his heart, his soul, his spirit was always there. And so for you going back to that city, um, this was a lot about this country. Yeah, it was definitely the baby part of it. And, um, and just, yeah, the experience of that. So I think, I think that's why it, it felt very embryonic. And what was cold about Rome was um, staying at the British school at Rome, which is a very colonial institution. Mm -hmm. So it was just, um, I mean, Delhi was, so much of this work has come out of Delhi. Like a lot of the materials, a lot of that, a lot of the materials, were, you know, which we'll talk about later on from the labor class. And, and this, and when I arrived at the British school, it was, it felt cold um, in the sense that I think it was a moment to pause and understand what colonization and what a colonial body feels like, what it, how it, the experience of that once again, but from the approach of being in Delhi, from the, the sensitive side to it. Um, yeah, that was the kind of contrast, but in Delhi it's, it is, it, it is of course my birthplace and also my father's and, and that experience was all engrossing, it was everywhere and kind of in, in every alley and it was absolutely magical and I find it hard to describe because it's just so much, it was absolutely vast and it's like when I talk about one thing there's just so much more that happened but it was, um, yeah, it was just it was a quiet, it was like a recognition. It's like seeing everything I'd already known, you know, somewhere. You talked about, touched on the materials a bit, and, and, and we'll talk about them sort of briefly in this room. Um, maybe not everyone can sort of see everything, but one of the key underpinnings of the materiality for the show was taking really egalitarian, easily accessible uh, materials that were sourced in New Delhi, and then in a way elevating them. So in, in, these, in these wax works here, um, we see uh, the bristles from from uh, brooms, from brooms, something about the, the, the working class, the untouchables, the, the, the manual kind of labor class. You know, the, the, the broom is almost like the signpost, like emblematic of that class, constantly sweeping, constantly cleaning up. We see the rope um, uh, there, uh, this beautiful rope, you know, made into this beautiful work, purchased in a market in, in, in New Delhi for a hundred rupiah. Um, these very egalitarian kind of materials that are symbolic of that kind of class um, are elevated. And so something that's something that's very important to, to you in the work is this idea of, of um, overcoming that oppression. And uh, Katika's father was a constant advocate for caste rights in India. And what's interesting, and, and you know, we might, and from a Western perspective, might not have as much kind of understanding of it, but um, during the time that you were away, the Indian elections took place and Modi, um, uh, the Prime Minister who was, who was elected, um, is, is, is a right-wing um, uh, politician in India and um, is really, really big on maintaining this caste system, on, 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 on maintaining um, the oppression of the approachable <coughs> class. So this is not like an esoteric um, sort of philosophical thing. This is a mandated government policy of uh, discrimination that's, um, that's entrenched. Um, and part of that is entrenched in Hinduism. So in, in Hinduism, this is like a, a foundationary kind of thing. And um, we talked a little bit about how hard that is to reconcile when faith mandates discrimination. I think it's often um, the way religion is used, uh, as we know, from the world. Um, it's interesting, uh, a few things. When I went to Rome, Brexit was happening. And of course, with the Italian, you know, the Italian politics, it's like, get a sense that it's not and when I talk about caste it feels so isolated and, and not of this space but it's that that feeling which is worldwide and the I think that's the way to tackle these small pockets is is through solidarity is through global globalization is through these conversations that happen sort of in between you know these sort of rooms um, another thing is that kind of with untouchability, it's it's more it's more that it doesn't define me. It, it, it's more that I can you know elevating these materials in the sense that as much as I am that I'm clearly not 
Yeah. So, so that's part of that elevation, part of that changing this idea of the materials that um, they are very achievement, they are very, they are what they are, but they're also, they can be complete, they can be in this space, you know, and yeah. And it's interesting, um, during your time in, in uh, New Delhi, you uh, reached out to the very famous um, author Roy, who wrote um, The God of Small yeah. Things, and she uh, had written a lot of non-fiction, a lot of essays about the caste system and sort of um, advocating for greater rights for the different uh, castes. And Katika, in her research, um, couldn't find any other visual artists from her caste. Like, just couldn't find, you know. And so I reached out to this eminent author and said, listen, this is the situation, I'm from this caste, blah, blah, I want to talk to you. And, and you met up and had lunch in, in New Delhi, and it was a very transformative, It was, it yeah. was because, um, it, it, she was so fierce, and then um, I think witnessing that, it's like you're reminded, and as you said, I graduated from school, I had so much support, and then being reminded why why I did this, mm -hmm. and, and seeing the bigger picture was so important um, in, in all aspects. Um, I was so well supported and, and had such a solid ground, and to feel that ground fall away, um, not just for the past few, six months, but hopefully for the next, you know, decades, to constantly feel like there is is nothing there. Always adds to more questions that leads you to, you know, bigger things. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Katika was saying to me that um, when she met with the eminent author, um, you know, th th there's been criticism of her as an author from from different castes, saying, well, what right does she, from a, from a, a higher caste, have to talk about our problems, like about self determination and and that 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 that, that um, sort of dialogue should be coming from these castes. And, and Katik is one of the unique voices uh, in that cast. But you talked about how how personally you're conflicted because although um, and we sort of parallel this to indigeneity, um, how although you come from that cast historically, you didn't grow up in with the you know the oppression of that cast in that kind of context. Um, can you talk a little bit about that yeah, that of kind of dichotomy within of you? Of course, I think there's a very strong. Um, because all of these issues are so sensitive, whenever someone talks about them, it's like, well, who, who are you to say? I mean, of course, I haven't lived this. I haven't lived the experience of any of this discrimination. And that's the question I'm interested in, in the fact that how can, if you're born into something, how can it define you in one place and it clearly not mean anything, you know, across the seas? I'm interested in, in the loopholes in that identity, in that story, in that facade uh, we create for ourselves. I'm interested in how it can, and it's interesting to, to, of course, to be shown Tracy, this idea of indigeneity, and also um, talking about race um, when I was at the British School and thinking of all of these ideas, and as important it is for those links and to see where they come together in that place of solidarity is also understanding the historical differences in, and, you know, acknowledging that as well, you know? Um, I think, so for me, the work isn't about speaking for someone other than myself. I'm speaking about the fact that it doesn't define me and that it shouldn't ever define anybody. And perhaps there's another, um, another um, way of looking at this. Um, I might, um, I might um, take the opportunity to maybe talk, um, you know, following on from that concept that, that these ideas are embedded in the work and talk directly about um, a, a, few, a few kind of key works um, just to give you guys an entry point um, into those. So um, we'll, we'll start with this, uh, you know, really sort of um, central and important work um, in this exhibition. Um, do you want to talk about the material process of creating this? Um, yeah, it was, um, so the paper underneath is a handmade paper I got from Delhi. And I actually took all of this back to Sydney. So I took all the paper back to Sydney. So it was created in Sydney in the gap between Delhi and Rome. I was there for 10 days. And um, and I, I just sort of worked all through, through the night. Um, so it, it had the paper. Um, I added charcoal to the wax um, and gold paint. And I had to really wrestle with it. Uh, and a lot of that wax then chipped off, which I melted back. and. I guess what I'm trying to say is it just it's a piece that just made itself and I actually I feel that way for all the works because my brain was somewhere else but all the works just made and were just made and, and they're just here. And mm -hmm. yeah. And it's interesting in this beautiful hang here in the gallery, um, we see this kind of detritus on the floor, like the, the, the elements that are falling down from the work. 
we see in some of the frameworks in the base of the frames, um, those kind of remnants of it, of it falling down. And this is something that we discovered about Katika's practice at art school. Um, your kind of love of sort of, um, you know, having an element, it's almost like that sort of Japanese ideal of the wabi-sabi, like having something in there that, that, that sort of honors the passing of time and, and, and the, the sort of, you know, partial degrading and, 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 and falling down so that, you know, even though what, you know, works are beautifully presented and framed and stuff like that, you have this kind of element down there and that's sort of like a psychic reminder about, I guess, impermanence and, 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 and sort of, you know, change. And it's interesting in, in both those cities, a city like um, uh, New Delhi or a city like um, uh, Rome, you know, or Miriam's here somewhere, we talked a little bit about the, the, the uh, Philippines as well too in a previous discussion about these cities where you really get a sense of the of the weather, of, of things being sort of um, degraded over time. These are cities that, where things have been exposed to, to time. We see it in that beautiful green work with the, with the, the patina of the, the copper, the kind of oxidizing, like what we see in government buildings in the in the CBD, the old San San buildings with the pipes and that, that sort of beautiful sense of, of, of degrading. And, and that's something that sort of psychically is really sort of central to the work, right? Of course, and it's, it's, that's the experience of both the cities. And it's, it's like the things you see in, in the periphery of your vision, the skin of every century on, on the buildings, on the material. And I think that's the kind of greatest capture of time, of, you know, of all these things we try to say is it's all there, you know? It's all there on the surface. It's all there. The surface is the time and and all the, the centuries that have come before. Um, yeah, it's a present. Uh, maybe we'll talk about this uh, this work here. Uh, 